Mr. President, we stand on the cusp of passing really one of the most significant pieces of public land legislation uh, since the omnibus bill of 2009. And I stand here to speak on behalf of this well-balanced package, which is absolutely critical for jobs across the Western United States and, and particularly from the perspective of my home state of New Mexico. And I want to say that none of this, absolutely none of this would be possible were it not for the years of effort and support from the local communities that helped to craft this legislation. Thanks to their work, New Mexico's critical public land-based economic engine will continue to grow in the energy and tourism and sporting and recreation sectors. And new wilderness and national park service units will continue to make New Mexico an unmatched destination for world travelers, as well as for the local families that have known for centuries that New Mexico truly is the land of enchantment, Mr. President. I want to start by talking a little bit about a place that's located in the Carson National Forest in northern New Mexico. We see a picture here of, of Lobo Peak that is part of uh, this area called Columbine Hondo. Uh, Lobo Peak is 12,000 uh, feet and change. And as you can see, quite a spectacular view. Uh, the kind of view most people associate with Montana or Colorado or Wyoming. And I can tell you that the, the mountains, the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in northern New Mexico uh, are unmatched uh, or could match any of those mountain ranges in states found further north in the Rockies. Columbine Hondo has been managed as a wilderness study area since 1980, Mr. President. And it is an area that is really cherished by all who know it and is a key attraction for the local tourism and outdoor recreation economy. Uh, when I was a young outfitter guide and the executive director of the Cottonwood Gulch Foundation, Columbine Hondo was one of the spectacular destinations where our students backpacked and slept under the stars and learned to navigate in the backcountry. This area has some of the best elk, mule deer, and bighorn sheep habitat in New Mexico. And people come from across the nation to experience a true wilderness elk hunt in its aspen and fir forests. Fishermen will tell you that it is home to some of the last best habitat for our native Rio Grande cutthroat trout, which is coincidentally uh, New Mexico's state fish as well. And Columbine Hondo is home to the headwaters of the Red River and the Rio Hondo. And I can tell you that there is nothing more precious in a state like New Mexico than our water. These are major tributaries of the Rio Grande. And the snow melt from Lobo Peak, seen here, and from Gold Hill, provide critical irrigation water to local Asequi associations who carry on centuries old agricultural traditions. For millennia now, these mountains, rivers, and wildlife have supported New Mexico's traditional communities. The first evidence of human habitation here stretches back 11,000 years, Mr. President. And nearby Taos Pueblo has been continuously inhabited for more than 1,000 years. Spanish settlers first came to the area in the 16th century, and Hispanic families have relied on these mountains and their bounty for their way of life ever since. Today, Columbine Hondo is a central attraction for visitors to Taos County, where outdoor recreation and tourism drive the local economy and contribute to a 68,000 job strong public land recreation industry in our state. In addition to finally designating Columbine Hondo as a full-fledged wilderness area, this package would also expand the Wheeler Peak Wilderness by approximately 650 additional acres, while modifying a boundary in order to create a loop trail accessible by mountain bikes along the Lost Lake Trail from Towski Valley to the East Fork Trail to Red River. This proposal has broad community support, including Taos Pueblo, 
many, many local government leaders, hunters, fishermen, business owners, land-grant heirs, ranchers, Asiki Parciantes, conservationists, mountain bikers, veterans, and literally, Mr. President, the, the list could go on and on and on. In October, on my birthday, um, I couldn't have asked for a better birthday gift. I was able to join the Columbine Hondo Wilderness Coalition, as well as regional stakeholders and local elected officials for a hike into the area to highlight the conservation and water initiatives uh, that they support. Local residents discussed why they support permanently protecting Columbine Hondo and what the area means to them and their livelihoods and their lives. Esther Garcia, a, uh, an Esequia commissioner and the former mayor of Cuesta, expressed her support well when she said, Columbine Hondo is very important to all of us. To preserve this beautiful wilderness area, we preserve our hunting, our pinon picking, our herb gathering. I want to thank all the residents of Taos County who have worked hard for decades, literally decades now, to make this wilderness area a reality. Now, Mr. President, also included in this public lands package is a provision to transition the Valles Caldera National Preserve in New Mexico to new management to increase public access. This proposal was developed after extensive input from local residents, from sportsmen, business owners, elected officials, and is supported by a number of local chambers of commerce. Together, they decided that a national preserve managed by the Park Service with a mandate for hunting and fishing to remain central to the management of the area was the best way to ensure expanded public access while preserving the incredible landscape for future generations. As you can see from this photo, Mr. President, Valles Caldera um, is often called New Mexico's Yellowstone, and for a reason. It is literally an area that is created as a collapsed supervolcano, where cinder cones rise up out of the high elevation grasslands, and where the, the cinder cones and the mountains that encircle this collapsed crater um, are, are covered in dug fir and fir and aspen forest. It is a spectacular, spectacular landscape. The caldera is home to crystal, crystal clear trout streams and, and some of the best elk habitat in the country. And since this area was um, transitioned to public ownership, the preserve has been managed by a board of trustees charged with generating enough revenue from user fees and other sources to make the preserve financially self-sustaining literally the same model used for the Presidio in San Francisco. But as you can see, this is not, Mr. President, San Francisco. This management regime has led to really drastically limited public access with relatively high entrance and permit fees, locking many New, Mexico, New Mexicans and other Americans out of this public land. And by shifting to park service management, we can open the Valles Caldera to the public while conserving the incredible, really one-of-a-kind, unique resources that are found here. As someone who's been lucky enough to draw an elk tag in the caldera, expanding hunting opportunities for the public is one of the primary reasons that I'm supporting this proposal. The preserve model ensures that hunting and fishing remains a central activity for the public to enjoy and National Park Service management will help balance expanded public access with conserving both the natural and the incredible cultural resources that are found in this area. Park Service management will also help bring more visitors and will raise the national profile of the preserve for visitors from outside New Mexico. The increase in visitors at the preserve is expected to bring more than 200 jobs and $8 million in wages to the local communities in the region. 
And that is great news for places like Los Alamos, Española, and Jemez Springs. We've seen elsewhere how protecting public land spurs economic development. According to the Headwaters Economics, or to Headwaters Economics, rural counties with protected federal lands like national parks and preserves saw a 345% increase in jobs over the last four decades. Whereas rural counties without commensurate protected public lands saw job increases of only 83% in the same period. I want to thank the local community and all the elected officials who have worked so hard for decades to make this proposal possible. And I want to thank Senator Tom Udall and former Senator Jeff Bingaman for their leadership on this issue. We all literally stand on the shoulders of giants in this community effort, as it was Senator Clinton P. Anderson of New Mexico who helped pass the Wilderness Act who first proposed National Park Service management of the Valles Caldera in the early 1960s. Additionally, as the son of a Navy sailor who literally saw the last of the above-ground atom bomb explosions and the first of the hydrogen bomb explosions firsthand, I am especially pleased to see that the Manhattan Project National Historical Park Act which was introduced by Senator Maria Cantwell, is also included in this title. It will establish three different educational sites, one in Los Alamos, New Mexico, one at Oak Ridge in Tennessee, and at Hanford in Washington. Los Alamos, New Mexico has made incredible contributions to our nation's nuclear history. And these parks will conserve historic sites and artifacts that played a key role in the dawn of the nuclear era while telling the story of the creation of the world's first atomic bomb and exploring its consequences for our society and our world. And finally, Mr. President, I'd like to mention a provision in this package that will benefit New Mexico's energy economy. It is one that I know that Senator Landrieu was uh, very supportive and excited about. It's a bill that I co-sponsored, but that was authored by my colleague, Senator Tom Udall, who championed this effort to ensure that the Bureau of Land Management has the staff that it needs to streamline the oil and gas drilling uh, permit process, while at the same time strengthening the review system that helps them meet important environmental and safety standards thousands of jobs, and a sizable portion of our state's economy are supported in New Mexico by the oil and gas industry, and increasing cooperation among federal agencies and business is an important way to boost job creation while at the same time expanding domestic energy production. Like other Americans who value our shared lands as assets to be utilized, to be enjoyed, and to be passed along to future generations. These are all things worth fighting for, Mr. President. I am committed to carry on my state's rich conservation history. And this legislation makes an enormous contribution to that ever-evolving story. And with that, Mr. President, I would yield the floor uh, to my colleague, the Senator from Montana.